previously on D. Sire. Busso de show. On none of Hitoke, Yoru de Arukunante. Simpsama, do stand this go. Mm, ah, Zoreva Chotone. I know Hitoima, Yedechu, Kimi Mita in a coa. Kito Hayajinisir. Nanka Kyo, Ilona Hitoni Guze Alcoto da Oktesa. Do Taisho stay got Tosani Wakarana Kunata Dakara. Yokisen so good to you, Monoa. どうしてなかなか難儀なものです。何せ未知でありますから、いい悪いの判断もつきづらい。未知ええ、未知は恐ろしい。希望であるかもしれないし、絶望かもしれない。加え、それが到来したとき、やはり未知であるがゆえに正確な対処も難しい。ただですねよろしければその前に一つ忠告をしてもよいでしょうか忠告すべて初めからそうなるようにそれ以外にはなれぬようにできているのです世界とは選択肢があるように見せかけた一本道ゆえにどんなものであれ予期せぬ事態を楽観などしないようにネジが外れてしまった時計は必然的に止まります<笑>助けてよなかなか可愛らしい彼女ですね食ってしまいたくなりますよ後ろが気になっては戦えないのではと思いましてねですから私があなたの不安要素を排除して差し上げますいい<笑>礼には及びませんそこを動くな殺しに行くエピソード21イムスピネネッツそこを動くな殺しに行くスピネ crossed the fucking line we are gonna go over there and we are gonna fuck him up so goddamn bad he'll regret every stepping foot on this earth I didn't ask him where he was, but that wouldn't be a problem. My neck began to ache. Bloodlust welled up inside me. It would tell me where to look for prey. I'd kill him, chop his head off, dye the guillotine red with his blood. For all I had ever been was a substitute prepared for that singular purpose. さてそれではお願いしますよ塩を送るのもこれが本当に最後です何せここまで来てまだ目が覚めないようであればさすがにもう救いようがない<笑>大多数の人々が異教の神々に向いているのに。特別の快楽を司る最古の偶像が人々の心を支配している知恵が愚行を招きベリアルが神の家に居座っているキリスト者自らもキリストから走り去っているのだから無事二つ目のスワスチカ完成することを祈らせていただきますよサラトゥストラあなたの道とその道に、幸と祝福のあらんこと。ジーク・ハイル・ビクトーリア。It only took me a mere ten minutes to reach my destination. A whole four kilometers in ten minutes. And amusingly enough, I hardly even broke a sweat. An Olympian feat for sure. Winning the gold medal would be a cinch for me if I entered. As I arrived at the Suahara Seaside Park, a burning pain flared in my neck, letting me know the bastard was nearby. I don't give a damn about what he was up to. I made up my mind and knew what I was going to do. Balling my right hand into a fist, I made an effort to feel the power slumbering within. 
formation remained beyond my capabilities, and I wasn't particularly skilled at activation either. But I managed to wound Sakurai that night. If I could hit my target, killing them would hardly be impossible. In essence, all I had to do was get close enough and grab him by the throat. Not even a greenhorn like me would miss at such a close range. On the other hand, I knew very well the whole getting close part would be. How hard that would be. Sorry. I could no longer afford to back down here, being pressured by necessity. Unless I pulled out my super ultra move, I'd just die like a dog. And if that happened, I don't want to even think about it. My thoughts felt quite disconnected. I remained calm, but occasionally came on the verge of snapping. Was that due to my unenerve or the unbridled anger and impatience that, despite my best efforts, I failed to restrain? Kasumi had to still be alive, right? Having a heroine die this early would have been ridiculous. I mean, she's a bargaining chip, right? I want to keep her alive as long as possible. There was no way someone as predictable as Kasumi wouldn't know a cliche like that. So... She had to be alive, right? Kosumi. Coming for you. I ended up unconsciously uttering her name, but that voice that passed through my lips had a pathetic, desperate ring to it. And I'd be lying if I said it didn't somewhat ease my pent-up tension. As such, my enemy wouldn't be foolish enough to let this opportunity go to waste. After a flash of my right arm wrapped in some kind of wire. Fuck. It tied me up in an instant, pulling me closer. The whole thing happened so fast I couldn't do nothing to resist and ended up being dragged a few dozen meters in a state of weightlessness by power I could only describe as superhuman. The next moment, a violent pain shot through me. Unable to land properly due to being constrained, I slammed the back of my head into the ground with tremendous force, to the point I nearly blacked out. The wire stayed wrapped around my body during the whole ordeal as the unknown force tied me to a tree. Or perhaps a streetlight. Robbing me of all freedom. I ended up crucified. Not unlike a certain holy man. The wiring felt tightest around my arm and neck, leaving me unable to breathe. My consciousness began to gradually fade out. No, I had to persevere. Fading here would mean the end. Which admittedly might put out of me my, my misery, but it would also mean that I came here for no reason. I tried to bite into my tongue in an attempt to keep myself from passing out, but ended up putting too much strength in the act, nearly biting the whole thing off. I was choking on my own blood. Shit. I may have managed to keep myself from passing out, but also nearly ended up committing suicide in the process. If that wasn't enough, being strangled hindered my brain's blood flow, making my vision grow dimmer and dimmer with each passing second. <gasps> Robbed of movement and sight, I could rely only on my senses of smell and hearing to gather information regarding my surroundings. My ear picked up a highly ominous sound, while my nostrils were filled with a metallic stench powerful enough to make me want to vomit. I felt my face showered by a downpour of fresh, coppery blood at fixed intervals, following a steady rhythm akin to the convulsions of a heart. Slash, sink, splish. If I were to imitate the sounds of that live performance, this was basically how they'd sound. Even someone with no sense of imagination could tell what was going on in front of me. The grip of the wire grew ever stronger, biting into my flesh, scattering blood everywhere. So what I'd been hearing for a while now were... The sound of that bastard cutting his victims up into round slices. The fuck is that? He's a spider! That's messed up. Look at that. Clenching my teeth, I channeled the entirety of my remaining willpower into staying conscious while forcing my eyes to dart wildly in all directions in an attempt to regain my vision. I began to see the vague contours of a something so horrifying 
It made me crave the repose of blindness. Before me was a spider wearing human skin, weaving its web between the nearby trees and streetlights. Wearing a mocking smile as it stayed hanging roughly two meters above the ground. <gasps> Decided to find all common sense. Almost like a mean prank. A calling it a nightmare would have been an understatement. The hell was up with this freak? I knew I had to sworn to leave behind the common sense of my day-to-day -day life. But was the other side truly this rife with absurdity? The side laughably removed from all traces of humanity. A thoroughly blatant disregard for human life that could make anyone cry. What did any of these lifeless women do? Deserve being strung up there like butterflies caught in a spider's web? <laughs> the wire strangling on my neck robbed me of the ability to speak. The only thing filling me with more rage than this asshole right for me was my own inability to throw an insult at him. どうやら沖に召さないようですね。あの復讐力閣下の演者にしてはまた随分とまともな心をお持ちのようだ。さて、こんな格好で失礼かとは思いますが、改めて自己紹介をいたしましょう。ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ
いささか聞いていただきたいことがありましてねあっ What? If you didn't come here to kill me, what the hell is all this about? レオンハルトから聞いたのではないですか我々はあなたに強くなっていただく必要があると Yeah 正直血の気の多い連中では教師に向きませんからね彼女とそしてこの私が生産廃芸家からその役を仰せ使ったというわけです Are you fucking with me right now? You're trying to teach me a fucking lesson? レオンハルトが講義をそして私が実技の方を適材適所というやつですか The tension of the wire wrapped around my neck loosened up right around the same time he said that, making me choke on the excess of oxygen rushing into my lungs. God damn it, why can't I clean this guy's neck right off? Rage blinded me. A plaything? A plaything? Is this low life considered killing people a, a fucking game? Fuck you, dude. This guy now has to push my no, how to push my damn buttons, I'll tell you that right now. He's really pissing me off, like legitimately. Anata. His goal? Is When I posed the question to Sakura, she simply dodged it. There was more to this than these freaks are wanting to do battle with me. I had yet to see the full picture. But none of that mattered here. I needed to know if she was still alive, goddammit. Spine went on, his lips curling into a smirk. Fucking smirk. すなわち生産廃芸家ですしかし彼は結局のところ代行に過ぎない代行 ?substitute for what? そうつまり仮の名詞ということですね一時的な今だけの期間を限定された権力故に本来の狩猟閣下がお戻りになれば Oh, Hitler? So, Stakotokara, Konosujit New York, Jita, no Hikinobashi. Karega can look no Zani costs to you, Karadeva Nai Kato. Ma, Beata, you are what they look almost cinema sang. Tada, what actually got me to Kangibi. Anokata was so come at the Zokuna Yokbo, what they do, you are all more in I. This no de Bea Marius no Jasu Yosorashi. いらぬ横槍が入らぬようにするという条件のもとそれが今のあなたと第一に接触させていただく権利骨を折りましたよ実際ここまでこぎつけるのはねスペインは recounted his goals in a jovial tone his gaze replete with condescension Too bad I couldn't care less about their power struggles and factional disputes. I could give a fuck about all that. I don't care. All of you are gonna die at some point anyway. I'm gonna kill them all. Fuck you, dude. シンにそれを欲しているのがこの私なのですからね。良いですか、サラツストラ。あなたも覚えておきなさい。手を結ぶなら、自己と正反対である人種の方が信用できるものなのですよ。
私は国連卓を掌握したいいや別に東方たちを虐げたいわけではないただ約束させたいのですよ私がやることに以後一切干渉するなとねこの60他の者らにとっては屈辱と退屈の期間だったかもしれませんだがしかしまた誰にも縛られず命令されず自由に生を謳歌できた殺したい時に殺し食らいたい時に食らい犯したい時に犯し奪いたい時に奪う I'm most sick of hearing this guy talk これこそが人間今さら過去の遺言や猛衆に付き合うなどくだらなすぎてごめんこうめるそのためにあの五人には英語を眠っていてほしいのですよあなたがここにいる以上メルクリウスの再来を防ぐのは困難でしょうがそれもまた不可能ではないサラトゥストラ私と手を組みませんかあなたの力をお借りできれば共に英語の自由を獲得することも夢ではない This guy for real? <laughs> Join him? What the hell did he... 言ったでしょう私はねもはや誰の下にもつきたくない This guy is totally fucking with me それが怪物の下ならなおさらだ Who's talking, man? 怪物国円卓の狩猟を復讐をそしてその下に付き従う三人の大隊長セミオンマキナシュリーバー The Golden Beast and Hermes Trice Megistus It would have been no exaggeration to label them as monsters who lived only for war. So, I don't want to see I noticed that Spine's smile has since faded. The spider's body began to tremble ever so slightly. My suspicions were correct. He had developed an abnormal fear of those five, wishing never to serve under them again. それに見合った祝福を与えようとなぜ我々が人を殺し魂を散奪するか答えは単純な足し算ですよ千人分の命を持てば千倍の生命力を獲得できるこのシャンバラで起こるのはそのストックを増やすための殺人競争遊戯です大量の魂が懺悔した場は戦場跡として法人と化しそれが8つ揃えばあの5人が戻ってくる<笑>そして奪った魂に相当する新たな力を授けてくれる<笑>ああだが私は嫌だもうたくさんだあんな人とも嫁の怪物たちに再び連続するなどと考えただけで狂いそうになる I must say this guy surprised me quite a bit I,、uh, I was not expecting this turn of events let me tell you 二度とあの五人には会いたくない彼らは Of course this is gonna be bullshit getting the hole in my guard or something Palpable dread colored Spina's tone as he spoke. He held my head between his hands and continued on with his desperate tirade. Probably. 
恐ろしいそしておぞましいのですよザラテストラクリストフも私の真意は知らないはずだ今ならまだこの儀式を妨害して中止に導くこともできるでしょう And you know those guys catch a wind of this, and they're going to catch a wind of this. You are so fucked. So, I'm going to go to the next one. I mean, yeah, I believe what he's saying, but it's like there's no way he's trying to get me to, to, to join forces with him and all this. This, this is just all, this is all, uh, he's like manipulative, right? This is his thing, right? It's what he does. He's a spider. He builds a web and he can trap you and sucks you dry. I don't buy it. Honestly, this was a lot to take in at once, and my mind was still riddled with questions. I need more time to process all the details. But one thing I could already declare with certainty Spina was trembling with fear, despite being the walking image of moral bankruptcy. <laughs> A murderer capable of killing countless innocents. His words sounded so petty, I found myself thoroughly astonished. Sounded other words. Small fry. Oh, he didn't like that. You know, it's one thing to hear, you know, laid out like that, right? A man who feared his oppressors, and a cowardly dumbass who only knew how to torment the weak. He was nothing more, nothing less. I wasn't trying to stand up for Wilhelm, Rusalka, or Sakurai. God knows I'd never do that. But as enemies, I would at least categorize them as worthy opponents. This guy, on the other hand. <laughs> Battle music. You're done. Why would he show me all this stuff only to ask for my assistance in the end? I was no champion of justice, but I had shed my humanity to the point where I can look at all this cruelty done to women and just feel nothing. Did he seriously think that robbing me of what I held dear would somehow free me? He was no more than an ordinary guy, albeit crazy. A weakling, yet fucked up in the head. A disgusting, half baked wretch. How goddamn full of himself could he be? Burn! <laughs> Take him. We can take him. We got this. With that wire around my neck now loose enough, I mustered all of my strength to deliver a headbutt right into Spina's face. He was sent flying backwards just as I had planned. A physical attack of this caliber wouldn't even inflict a single scratch on ground, but this guy didn't seem that sturdy. <laughs> I'd resort to whatever I could use at this point. Be it provocation or trash talking, I felt droplets of blood trickle down my forehead after I smashed my head open in that attack. But a wound of this caliber barely even hurt. Incomplete or not, I still had an on an day slumbering within my body. And that word tricked me every time. Which meant I'd had no trouble with most injuries. And then. <laughs> Nothing easier to predict than a weak would succumb to anger. He gave in to his emotions and sent me flying with a kick. As a result, I was blown away along with the lampless I'd been propped against. <laughs> well, I was willing to give the guy some credit. He really did exhibit superhuman strength. No average man could bend an iron lamppost like that, nor kick me so hard to make me feel like my organs were jutting out of my mouth. But compared to the rest of the freaks I'd faced, that's nothing, man. At least I could count on his stupidity. The lamppost he broke allowed me to escape. I rose to my feet, making sure not to let the pain from my stomach twist my expression. 
Anyway, we are now on equal footing. It was a bit of a lengthy prologue, truth be told. But the fate can now begin for real. And he was a perfect as a first opponent. Fuck now, man. ああ、やくそくしたろ。つまらん話を我慢して聞いたんだから、あいつがぶちかどうか今すぐ答えろ。ようだろな。スペニーリザナウィズアシュロアエンアモメントレーター。ワンオブザウォーマンストロングアップオ
無駄ですよそんなものでは The flash that fired up was literally chopped up by Spinny's net like multi layered wires. Slicing things up was supposed to be my specialty. And he cleanly beat me at my own game. I knew it. I wasn't gonna win at this rate. I kicked off a nearby tree, forcing myself to dodge the attack. The spot I used to stand at ended up shredded by the wires, transforming benches and street lamps akin to thin slices. I fired off another omnidirectional flash the moment I landed. I wasn't going to have perfect control of it either way, so this still be trying and failing to aim properly. Miraculously enough, it headed straight for Spine, but... <laughs> the wires protecting him once again tore me aside to shreds, leaving me firmly between a rock and a hard place. But I had to keep dodging his attacks for now. If I got caught, it was all over. We were dead. Oh. The wire spread before me resembled a casting net, and I had no confidence I could indefinitely evade their attempts at seizing me. Using the little time I still had left, be it minutes or mere seconds, I needed to find a way to turn the tables. I didn't come here to die today. Damn sure. Yeah. Good. I managed to dodge that one too. Just a little more and... <laughs> What? <laughs> I realized that a wire had wrapped around my right ear. Shit. A second later, I found myself once again dragged away into a spider web with such inhuman speed that I nearly passed out. Having been slammed into a net strong enough to slice through steel, my body sprayed blood in all directions. The fact that I came out of the ordeal with my limbs still intact could have been counted as tremendous luck. It was far too early to celebrate. Now that I had been caught up in the wires, I had no way of prying myself free of their deadlock. Through my own strength alone. <laughs> was she among the strung up, violated female bodies hanging next to me? <laughs> Panic flooded my mind for a moment, but Spine cut me off before I could say anything. <laughs> Fuck you. Do <laughs> ここ the wires coiling around me grew tighter with a creak, sinking into my flesh and attempt to cut me up into round slices. He was right. Unless I gave into his demands, I die here. I can't get out of this. But right now, right now, all such negative emotion have been washed clean from my mind. <laughs> After a short beat, I exhaled a deep breath. How would I put it? He loved the sound of his own voice, goddamn, too much. 
I was trying to have a bit of a moment over here. This fuck went on and on with his nails on the chalkboard speech. I failed to see where you're going with this rant. Nani? As to Spine. だから胸大きい女。俺は好きだし、他の大多数だってそうだよな。別に貧乳をバカにしてるわけじゃないけど、男なんて基本どいつも体感気方主義なんだし。Ren as a narrator and your conscious kind of sort of. I'm confused. What are you where are you going with this? 何事もでかいに越したことはない。大は賞を兼ねるって。ああ、ほら。あんたの国でなんて言うのかは知らないけど、多分バンコク共通概念だろう。では、look それはそうだろう。でもな、でか形とか、乳首の色とか、大きさとか、いろいろ細かい判断基準があってだな。その中でも俺は、まあなんていうか、マニアックな趣味してんだよ。Naturally, I had not been aware of it myself. But I used to have this jackass of a friend who would not shut up about it. That's what I said. I met his confusion with a smirk. It sounded ridiculous when I said out loud, but she did seem to be a bit of a faded partner to me. Oh, she doesn't have the mole. I mean, I even remember such a minuscule trait of hers. Whatever胸に心がある女がいいんだよ。てわけで、この連中と心中する気もあんたと手を組むつもりもない。いや、fuck <laughs> Ren, you genius. Now was the time to show him what Ren Fuji was made of. <laughs> We're not dying here. You know what they say? You know, you just you enter a place, you know, I'm not going to die here. Well, that's today. The wire sank deeper into my body. It would have no doubt taken less than a second to tear my flesh, cleave through my bones, and sever my torso. A second that felt short, as short as it was hopeless. None of my attempts at resistance would have borne fruit quick enough to be effective. A frame of time so brief would have been enough for little to nothing. Under normal circumstances, I would have died for certain. No doubt about it. So what I had to do was slice up that very second, extending it. For the longest time, I had always wished I could stop time. This isn't Chrono Clock. As such, I'd already gotten used to manipulating my perception of it. I'd slice it up into a moment that felt like an eternity. And within that hollow, empty space, where a single second had been extended to last a million, I would have had enough time to think of a countermeasure. I'd form my unnerve, shaping it into a palpable weapon sharp enough to slice through these wires. I may not have been fond of blades, but this too felt like karma at work. On that rainy night, I'd already made peace with the fact that I might die. In other words, there could only have been one reason still preventing me from mastering this power. I'd been reluctant to involve this girl, Marie, in all this. She seemed so innocent. I couldn't bring myself to make her witness another's death, to force her onto a battlefield. And that fact alone might have been the sole dividing line separating us. I should have understood. I should have noticed. She had severed my head on countless occasions. She was a guillotine, 
an instrument to carry out executions. Her sole purpose was to decapitate, to kill. Her only effective means of communication converged upon the singular act of beheading. Then, within the confines of a moment frozen in time, I plunged down into the deepest recesses of my ego, attempting to converse with my Ananerbe, with Marie. Can I truly wield you? Will you permit me to lift you out of here? I'm not much of a heartthrob, nor have I grown used to dealing with girls, so being at my side probably won't be too fascinating an experience. Even now, I'm about to claim you for my own to stain your innocent soul with the blood of others. Despite that, could you still forgive me? Will you still accept me as your partner? Marie, please, answer me. My innermost desire is to spare you. The gruesome side of death hasn't changed in the slightest. But right now... I really do need your power. I need to materialize my killing intent to beat this guy. I'm begging you. Grant me a weapon that would help me return to those days of old. A blade to protect all that I hold dear. A guillotine to sever the chains of the law holding us prisoner. I won't mistreat you. I swear it on my life. So long as I go against my principles and make you witness blood and death, I will lay everything bare before you. So please, decide. In the end, am I a man worthy of you? How do you feel about me? It was then that I heard a voice echo in the very bottom of my consciousness. The unus mundus that lay even beyond my id. My shit. I see. In that case, there is no more need to hesitate. Let us go, then, side by side. Then raise the curtains on tonight's Grand Gugno. Yetzra! Yeah,